Hey everybody, I'm so glad that you are joining us today. I have such an awesome guest coming on. I'm super excited to talk to Miss Wendy Griffith, who is a busy woman, so I'm happy that she took some time out of her schedule to join us here to talk about her book called You Are a Prize to Be Won. This show is gonna really be dedicated to singles out there, gonna give you some encouragement. You know, Wendy has a beautiful story and testimony that she's lived through, so she's gonna share all that. But for those of you who have not caught Wendy on CBN, Wendy is an anchor, she's a senior reporter for CBN, and she's also the co-host of The 700 Club with Pat Robertson. She also co-anchors two other shows for CBN called Christian World News and CBN News Watch. But before we get Wendy on, I want to give a quick shout out to Noble Gold, the sponsor of this show today. Are you frustrated with this new administration like so many of us are, where we're seeing gas prices going up, maybe your retirement fund is dwindling, you're losing money, and you're looking for a new approach? Well, Noble Gold is a great place to start. If you're looking for an IRA or a 401k, Precious Metals is the way to go. Take out a qualifying IRA this month, and Noble Gold will gift you a solid gold 22 karat, one tenth ounce American Eagle bullion coin. Find out more at noblegoldinvestments.com. Again, that's noblegoldinvestments.com. Wendy, thank you so much for joining us today. We, I'm so excited to have you on. I know you wrote a best-selling book. It's called You Are a Prize to Be Won. You wrote this book when you were single. You were single for 55 years. There it is. I just got my copy, and I can't wait to read it. It was a huge success, and everyone's waiting for a part two because now you're married. But, but walk us through what you shared in this book and your advice yes. as a single woman. Right, I was single for 54 years. Let's don't make it longer, okay? Because it was a long time. <laughs> you said 55, but 54 years was long enough to be single. Um, yeah, this book was born out of a heartbreak. I had uh, almost 10 years ago, I was in my 40s, late 40s, and I, was in a relationship and I thought, you know, this is the one I'm going to have my fairy tale. I'm going to have the wedding, the honeymoon, you know, the whole nine yards. And at the end of one year, uh, he broke up with me, which, uh, I was so devastated. I, I was in complete heartbreak. Um, and during that period, the Lord told me, you know, Wendy, you loved him, but you didn't love yourself. And that's why I had to take him out of your life to teach you to about your own value, because unless you love yourself and, and know your own worth, you can't really be in a healthy relationship. So, of course, that didn't make me feel any better. But then God said, write about your test. So, you know, go figure the words just poured out of me and the chapters and you are a prize to be to be one was born out of that because you are a prize to be one was a was a rhema word that God spoke to me years even before I was in this relationship. And I used to tell other people, other women, you are a prize to be won. But I didn't truly believe it, I guess, in my in my own heart. And I had to learn it the hard way. And so I hope when women read this book, uh, they will learn the lesson that I learned and they won't have to go through it themselves. Amen. I mean, we all have that story of heartbreak. Like I've had a terrible heartbreak when I got out of high school. It was my high school sweetheart dated seven years wow. and it broke my heart. It took me a year and a half to get over it, but I'm yes. so grateful I went through that because I did realize my worth. And I also realized that he wasn't the right one. He wasn't yeah. the right one. Well, and then, and that's what you realize once you know your own value, you realize God's a good father and he wants to give you his best. So if he takes something away, it's only because he has something better. And it took me, you said you were in heartbreak for a year and a half. I was about twice that. And, and my relationship was only a year long, but it was so, for me, it was so intense because I hadn't dated in a while and I thought this is it. And um, hey, you can fall in, lo in love with the wrong guy. You know, it it happens. Oh. And if, if you ignore, now God doesn't want that to happen. He gave me a lot of red flags and I just kept saying, that's the devil. That's not God. <laughs> you know, I kept rationalizing like, uh, and, you know, but looking back, I see the red flags and I write about that in the book. I have a chapter called how to avoid the counterfeit. Um, I have a chapter called the red herring. And so I have a, some chapters that really help you because when you 
you know, when you, when you go there in, in your heart, and, and it doesn't matter if you're a Christian because we, you know, we all are uh, susceptible to this. It, it is hard to back, you know, backtrack once you've fallen in love, you know, and then you make all kinds of ex excuses to stay in the relationship. So, um, yeah, this is about not settling for less than God's best and, uh, you know, learning to hear his voice, you know, before, during and after the relationship. What are your biggest tips for single women out there right now? And also single men, if you're waiting on your wife, what are your biggest tips for singles? Because you had a lot of experience for a while. I had a lot of experience. <laughs> and so uh, in, enjoy, you know, I know it's easy for me to say now that I'm happily married, but I really did as much as I wanted to be married. I enjoyed being single because I made it because I enjoyed it on purpose. I said, I used to tell the Lord, um, okay, God, I don't have a husband. I don't even have a boyfriend. So give me another mountain to climb because uh, in my forties, I really got into hiking and and then later into like high elevation climbing. And for my 50th birthday, I climbed Mount Kilimanjaro in Africa. And after that, I was just like, okay, I got it out of my system. But then two years later, I didn't get it out. Of, I said, I got to go to ever space camp. And then, so ever, so I would just keep, keep telling the Lord, um, uh, give me another mountain to climb. And I had so much fun and so many stories that God gave me, you know, climbing those mountains and people that I met and lessons that I learned and sermons that came out of climbing Mount Kilimanjaro that, uh, and so I tell single women now, you know, and you're such a prime example of how to do it right. Anna. I mean, you, you have your passions. I mean, you have this incredible social media following, following your preaching, your teaching, your, you know, you, you're, you're living your life and you're going to meet that person that God has handpicked for you while you are living your life and doing the things he's called you to do. You know, God never called us to sit at home and wait by the phone or, you know, for a text message. He's that's right. That was, that's not his plan for any single person. Uh, well, I, I'll do that when I'm married or I'll do that when I have a boyfriend, you know, do it now. And so I have this whole chapter called be the prize, which means, you know, wear that red dress now. I literally had this red dress that was so awesome hanging in my closet for seven years, never wore it and was waiting for the right moment, the right guy, the right. And I finally uh, did wear it and, and I still wear it. Um, and, you know, don't don't wait. Don't put things off just because you're not in that significant relationship yet. I love that advice because really this is something that I was talking with the Lord about recently. I said, Lord, where's my husband? And I just felt he's going to come in the right time. Just wait, just keep doing what you're doing. I will present him in the perfect timing. Number one, number two, the Lord was highlighting there are benefits to singleness. There are benefits to marriage, but there are so many benefits to singleness. And I thought about it and I said, okay, Lord, that's interesting because if I was married and had kids, I wouldn't be able to, to jump up and do a speech in Tulsa, Oklahoma or in Florida coming up in a, in a month. Like I, I would, it, you know, you have your team, you're, you have your, another part of the marriage. So um, another person in the marriage, so you have to make sure it's, you're doing it together. And sometimes I know I'll be doing separate things as well, but there's freedom in singleness and I'm really, really actually finally enjoying it. And I think reading your book for me is the perfect time because I'm really understanding there are benefits to singleness. There are people that come in your life. Like I was telling you, we were on the phone for an hour and I told you about the story where I had a counterfeit come, you know, the devil always sends a counterfeit before the right person before the right husband or wife comes in. So do you want to talk a little bit about the counterfeit the devil sent your way and how to notice the red flags and, and what they are? Yeah. Well, you know how a hundred dollar bill, uh, well, a counterfeit hundred dollar bill looks almost exactly like the real thing. Um, you know, just like a, a counterfeit Prada purse looks almost exact. I can't tell the difference. I mean, an expert can tell the difference. And that's why we need God's help at identifying the counterfeit, because most of us can't really tell the difference. I mean, they look the same, they smell the same, they talk the same talk, but God sees the heart and he can tell you what's really going on. I remember during this relationship, God gave me a couple of dreams that were very, because I guess that's the only time he could get my attention, you know, when I was sleeping. And I would wake up feeling very unsettled and sort of knowing, okay, that is 
you know, not a good sign. Maybe I should back up in this uh, relationship. But again, I was just like this. And, um, you know, I wanted the fairy tale and I thought this was my last chance to get it. But, you know, later on, God told me after the breakup, he said, you didn't miss it and it's not too late. So I hope um, if anybody's out there going through heartbreak right now, that's a message for you. You did not miss it. You didn't miss God's best. That's such a good message because you are a price to be one. It says in the word of God, it says a man that finds a wife finds a good thing and favor. And uh, with a woman, you know, we, we, what, what's, what's your perspective as a woman? Are we to look for our husband or are we, are our husbands going to find us? <laughs> well, I always, you know, have my eyes open. I mean, there's nothing wrong. You can't help looking, you know, right. Um, and a lot, my sister met her husband on match.com and they have a fantastic marriage, two beautiful children. And she, I mean, it's just a, you know, God uses, uh, online dating. He does. He told me not to do it. So same. You know, I did in my frustration and Lord, forgive me. I did try it a couple of times because I thought, Lord, you're just not doing your part, you know, and you know, God is so good because he can handle your frustration. He knows it is not easy being single. Um, but, but like you said, there's so many blessings too. Then there's so much freedom. However, there were a lot of, I just got so tired, Anna, of the, of the lonely weekends. Friday would come. And after my last show on Friday afternoon, it would just hit me like a brick wall. Like all my colleagues would you know, say, you know, have a great weekend. And they were on their way to see their husbands or wives or families or, and I would just be like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do with myself for two days? Because work was sort of my life. And it was, you know, my life for many, many years. And I mean, yeah, you had church on Sunday and you had the gym and you had the usual stuff that you do, but I wasn't in a, in a relationship. And so I, I dreaded Friday afternoons. And so when this breakup happened, it that was probably my worst fear and anxiety was going back to the lonely weekends. And that's when I really just made a conscious decision, Lord, um, you know, I need to get out there and climb some mountains and see the world and do all these things because obviously you want me to be single right now and I want to enjoy it. And I did enjoy it. So, you know, you can have, you can do both. You can, you can keep praying, keep your eyes open, keep waiting and still enjoy your singleness. But I think you asked me about, um, you know, how should we, should we be the pursuers? No. I don't believe that we should. Men love to be the pursuers. They love the chase. We need to let them do that. Amen. And women love it too. You know, women want to be pursued. I think it's important. It says when a man finds a wife, he's got to find the wife. Yeah. The Lord puts us in a position where he can find us. Like you were saying, it's not just sitting at home and waiting for the phone to ring. Oh, this is your husband. Unless he's super prophetic. But you know, but it just, the Lord wants us out there just to, just to do his will keep moving forward in his perfect timing. He will present someone. Um, and I, and I could, and I only say that because I see friends around me that that's what the Lord did. And I'm so encouraged hearing, you know, you having went through a, 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 a long season of singleness and, but aren't you glad you waited? And also how amazing for your husband that you are a prize to be one then isn't he glad he waited for his wife? Well, yes, I am so glad I waited. And I remember, um, I don't know, maybe it was a year before or two before I met my husband. I met him when I was 52. And I, I was like, okay, Lord, you know, I'm 50. I'm ready. And I heard the Lord say, when you're ready, there he will be. And I'm like, but I'm ready already. And But then I realized, no, God knows me better than I know myself. And like you were saying, there, you know, what if you had a baby or you were married? You know, you couldn't run off and climb Kilimanjaro. You couldn't. Um, there were so many trips I made overseas, even, and I was in war zones. Um, I was, you know, on the border of Israel and Lebanon with Katusha rockets flying over me. I couldn't have done that married or with a baby. I would have felt, you know, I would have felt irresponsible. So there's a lot of freedom in being single. And, and one of the things is you can spend more time with the Lord. I mean, you just can. Um, one of the biggest changes for me has been dinner, like 
now like food, you know, I never used to worry about food. I mean, I, I have a lean cuisine or, you know, I just skip dinner, or have a pint of Ben and Jerry's, whatever. I mean, I just didn't care about food. Well, when you get married, get ready, ladies, because guys like to eat. <laughs> it's, it's now it's always like, what's for dinner? And there's a lot of cooking. But, you know, I I love cooking for my husband and he's so appreciative, whether it's, you know, scrambled eggs and bacon for breakfast or, you know, something much nicer for dinner. He's very appreciative. And that's one way you can show your husband love is for, through food. <laughs> Amen. And, you know, they want lunch, they want snacks, you know, so do kids. <laughs> and so that, that's, that's awesome. Um, how did you know, so you said that you had a dream that you knew it was your husband. Was there any other words that the Lord told you that you knew this was your husband? This is, this is it. No, I, I, I never had a dream about my current husband, Bill. Um, oh, sorry. That was about your other relationship. Yeah. I had, I had a dream that I should get out of the relationship. I had a couple of dreams that I should get out of the relationship, but he beat me to it. So, um, but my husband, my now husband, he had a dream about us when we first started dating. That was really, really interesting. And it actually involved this book. And it, in, in his dream, we were, um, he, he said in the dream, and we'd only been dating a couple of months. So I was still, you know, even trying to figure out if I liked him at this point. Right. So he tells me um, he's on where I'm on stage talking about you are a prize to be won. And then he gets up on stage and introduces himself as my husband. And he starts talking. What? Yeah. Well, I'm and in, the he, in the dream. Right. In the dream. Wow. And I'm, and I'm taking this all in. Right. Because we've only been dating a couple of months. And I'm like, OK, God, this is good. This is good. But, you know, I'm not going to like freak out right now. So um but I do believe that was prophetic because not long after we got married, we got invited to a singles conference to for to both of us to speak and, and talk about how we met. Because of COVID, that conference got postponed. Nonetheless, I still believe that was a prophetic dream that that will come to pass. So he was the, he was the dreamer. He was the one, you know, that that saw us in the future, which I thought was pretty amazing. Amen. Yeah, the Lord confirmed it to him for him to know who you really are. So he could put on the charm even more, I'm sure, and, and just like pursue you. And it's just so odd. I mean, obviously he's pursuing you were dating, but it's just so encouraging when the Lord confirms that you're not wasting your time. This is actually the other half. So your um price, so you are priced to be one did really, really well. And I know there are a lot of people reaching out to you and asking, hey. This book ended with you still single. Now you're married. Are you working on book number two? Yes, I am. I'm I'm so excited, Anna, because I I wanted to write it sooner, but you know I'd only been married a couple of I've only been married two years, and I thought I need to wait a while before I write this book, and it's just pouring out of me now. It's it's about sort of the years in between because there were um, five years in between when this book came out and. Uh, which I dedicated to my future husband. So there was a lot of faith, uh, you know, that I put into that and and this current book. So I'm hoping the next one is going to come out in September, and um, it's going to be about the the years in between. But especially, women want to know how did you meet Bill, and uh, and I want to tell him. <laughs> so awesome! Can't wait to. Read that story because I know there's so many other more, you know, more details in there that we can all um, read and get more information about. Um, man, I'm, I'm just I'm like thinking what other questions. Hold on, I'm going to think about what other questions I want to ask as a single. Hmm. Is there anything else that you wanted to chat about? Well, in my next book, I really want to encourage women, you know, you're not waiting in vain and that God has a purpose in the waiting. So to so enjoy being single now and of course and live your life like you you really are such a great example Anna because it's just going to happen so organically and naturally for you and uh you know you're just going to turn around and, and and it might not be love at first sight I mean it was not love at first sight with me and Bill uh for him either you know and as much as I wish you know it was for him but it, it wasn't and it took us a few months and he had been through a pretty devastating divorce years before. And so he was 
very cautious. He wanted to be married again, but uh, he was he he also didn't want to make another mistake, you know. And who who wants to go through that again, right? So um, yeah, he. So I'm going to wait about. I'm going to write about even once we met, there was a period of waiting, and um, and that was a little bit difficult for me because I told him I said I'm not on the five year plan, you know. I'm already in my fifties. And, uh, and I, I didn't, and I just wanted to make sure too, that, you know, he was the one and God is so faithful. And if you, if God has put a desire in your heart to be married and you are his child, then you got to believe that that desire is from him and he can make it come to pass. You know, I love that scripture in Isaiah 16, 34, he says, by his spirit, he will bring them together. And, um, you know, God says two is better, two are better than one, or is it two is better than one, two are better than one, you know, and so, yeah, I can't wait for the next chapter to come out. We're excited. I can't wait to read your first one as a single and then read the second one as what to expect when I'm actually going to get married. I have another question. What is your take on are we gonna are we gonna be attracted to our husband? Because obviously, you know, we're waiting in faith. The Lord has someone in mind for us. But I get this question all the time. Am I I'm afraid that my I'm not gonna be attracted to my husband? You know, we've what, what, we're waiting until marriage, like we're putting all our faith into the Lord with saying, Okay, we're not being intimate until marriage. Like we're you know, it, it's a scary thought, but you know what? I I, I believe that the Lord knows what I want and what I'm attracted to. But what would you say to those women that have that question and are scared if we're going to be attracted? Yeah, that's a great question, Anna. And I would say God's good. God is a good God. You know, he's not going to give you something that you don't like. You know, he wants to give you something. He wants to give you the desires of your heart. And I know with my husband, he gave me more than I asked for. And I had that same fear as a young believer, as a young Christian, when I was in my thirties, uh, I was in a relationship and, you know, it was more of a friendship, but I really wanted it to be more. And I just couldn't, even my mother looked at me and she's like, you don't have any passion for him. And I actually got offended because I thought, you know, but he looks so good on paper and, you know, we were, you know, I was the right age and he was the right age and we, it should have worked. And, you know, we really try to force things and God is like, don't do that. You know, I'm going to give you the desires of your heart. It's not going to be difficult for you to love this person or be attracted to them because they're going to be, you know, the match that I put together. God is too good to give you something that you would not be attracted to. Hey Amen. That's encouraging. That's right. <laughs> and, and, I'll, and I'll just add real quick, you know, like with my husband, I, um, because I was older, I thought maybe my husband would be bald or would already have silver hair. And the desire of my heart was a guy with dark brown hair. And my husband mm -hmm. is one, and he still has dark brown, natural dark brown hair. It is the prettiest color hair. And I, you know, and of course one day it's going to go gray, but you know, he, God gave me the desire of my heart and I love beards and my husband has a beard and I love, I'm from West Virginia originally. And so the first, when I first met Bill, I said, where are you from? Cause he had a pretty Southern draw. And he said, well, I'm from right here in Virginia beach, but because he's a hunter and a fisherman and he hangs out a lot with the, you know, the outdoor guys, he sort of had this draw country you know, draw that reminded me of home, that reminded me of West Virginia. So again, God gave me more than I asked for and and he'll do the same for you. That is a great question though, because I went through that for years thinking I was gonna have to maybe learn to love the person that God brought into my life. But that is this a huge lie from the enemy. God loves you and he will give you the desires of your heart. And you know, some people make a list. I I've made lists and not made lists, and God knows what's what you want. That's right. God knows us better than we know us. He knows us so well. He knows exactly what you're attracted to, what you're not. He's probably looking from heaven, like you think you're attracted to that, but actually you're not. And 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 he knows as his as a father who would be perfect for his daughter and who would be perfect for his son. 
And obviously there's no perfect human, no perfect you know person. It was only Jesus that walked the earth that was perfect. But someone who is really good for us and also going to walk with us in, in the Father's destiny for our life and for your life and your husband's life. And I think it's so encouraging to hear that. Can I share one more story? Absolutely, please. Okay, so when we first started dating, um, I had just been asked, it was uh, summer of 2017, and I'd been asked to speak at a women's conference in Saskatoon, Canada. I had never, I mean, I'd heard of Saskatchewan, the province, but I'd never heard of Saskatoon. So I'm telling Bill, uh, or I think Bill said to me uh, that he was going hunting in Canada in October. I said, really, I'm going to Canada in October too. I said, where are you going? He said, Saskatoon. And, and to me, it was just like, okay, Lord, we're both going to Saskatoon, which I'd never heard of in October in, of the same year for completely different reasons. I mean, he's going to hunt ducks and they have, you know, it's great geese and duck hunting up there apparently. And I'm going for a women's conference, but I felt like the Lord was showing me, you know, you guys are on the same path. You're going in the same direction. Um, you know, you're two different people and you have two different passions, but I'm bringing you together. And so I, you know, now I have like these Christmas ornaments from Saskatoon and all these fridge magnets that say Saskatoon, because to me, that was such a sign that, okay, Lord, you're in this. And I, I told the Lord too, I said, Lord, this is good, but I, I love signs. And I was determined not to read everything as a sign. You know what I'm saying? Cause we can, we can, it's easy to spiritualize stuff, yeah. you know? Now I do have a lot of cool stories about how God spoke to me through vanity plates and you, you are prized to be one. Um, and also in my next book too, but I, um, and I love that. I love that God speaks to us through vanity plates or however he wants to speak. But in this case, he spoke through the fact that Bill and I were both going to Saskatoon, Toontown. They call it Toontown. Wow, the Lord was tuning you in your life. That's so great. <laughs> That's so prophetic. I love that he does things like yeah. that. I so love that he does things like that. Uh, Wendy, so where can people find you uh, on social media uh, and on email? Like, well, I'll, I'll cut this out. Um, actually, before I say that, I'm going to cut that little bit out. I have to like mute your mic sometimes because there's like an echo. Um, what was I going to say? So, so, Wendy, when can people expect part two? of you are a prize to be one. Okay, well, of course, it'll have a totally different title and I'm not gonna give that away yet, but hopefully this fall, I'm hoping September, but if I really gotta start writing, um, but I'm, I'm excited because the, you know, we will, everybody wants the happy ending and the next book has the happy ending. That's so exciting. So, uh, and where can people find you if they wanna follow you and, and, and see what you're doing, what you're up to? Awesome. Yeah, I'm on Facebook, uh, Wendy Griffith CBN. Um, I'm on Twitter at Wendy G CBN. And I'm on Instagram at Wendy Griffith TV and Wendy Griffith CBN. So I've got two two accounts on, on uh, Instagram. One, one I talk more about my book and one is more about CBN. Awesome. Well, we love you on CBN. You do such a great job. You do such a, such a great job. We just adore you. You're beautiful. You're sweet. And you have so much. You're just such a great anchor as well. And a reporter. I know you did reporting for such a long time. Um, I, I was able to go back and just watch a lot of your reporting. I specifically loved when they pushed you off that bungee cord. <laughs> Hilarious. Oh, my gosh. Yes, that was one of my memorable stories from us from New Zealand. Yes. The, yeah. Uh, swing over canyon drop or something like that Amen. Yeah, crazy scary but fun very fun. and how yeah. often how often are you on cbn um gosh uh, i do several shows uh the prayer link on mondays uh well it airs on tuesdays on the cbn news channel uh, i do 700 club on wednesdays and i do christian world news um that airs on tbn on fridays and then i work on stories during the week and so I'm on, you know, it's like, I don't have a set time, like, except for like Wednesdays, I'm the 700 Club co-host. Wow, you're a busy woman, but we love you. We adore you. We thank you for those of you that you, uh, you have not purchased the book yet. I'm telling you, I heard it's fantastic. I saw the reviews. I'm excited to read it as a single. And Wendy, it was such a pleasure having you on. Thank you for joining us. 
Well, thanks for having me. I've admired you so much. I follow you on Twitter and it's, it's great to connect with you as well. So okay. good to connect. And we're looking forward to book number two as well. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You can get this one at Amazon. Yes. Amazon guys, amazon.com. You are a prize to be one because you are a prize to be one. We are all a prize to be one. We're all children of God and the Lord has a perfect husband or wife planned for you. And if you're single and you need some encouragement and you want to hear more about Wendy's story of singlehood and what she learned and tests and trials that came her way where she almost married the wrong one. I, that happened to me as well. I highly suggest getting her book and reading it and blessing her as well. It's going to bless you as, as well. Amen. Amen. Well, Wendy, we love you. We'll see you soon. You got to come back when you do, when you have, I want to say that again. You have to come back when you have book number two out. Absolutely. I can't wait. I can't wait. And I can't wait to hear your story about when you meet the one. That's right. <laughs> Bye, guys. Perfect.